What is the difference between a master's thesis and a PhD thesis? Essentially both are scientific, but there are some important nuances you should know in order to get the best possible results for each type of thesis. In this video I will show you the five most important differences that you must pay attention to when writing your master's or PhD thesis. By knowing these you will not be taken off guard by the requirements of professors and examination offices. Instead you will be perfectly prepared. And now without further ado, welcome to Schreib. Many thanks to Scribba for sponsoring this video. More about Scribba later. Difference number one the scope of master's and PhD thesis. The most obvious difference lies in the scope of the work. On average, a master's thesis is expected to have 60 to 150 pages of text, excluding bibliography and appendix. A PhD thesis typically ranges from 200 to 400 pages. However, there are always outliers outside of this spectrum. It all depends on the discipline you are in and the requirements of your research institution. What is certain is that a PhD thesis should be more comprehensive than a master's thesis. Difference number two, time spent on your thesis. For a master's thesis, you usually have three to six months from the time of registering your topic. If you're worried that this time isn't enough, you can also game the system a little. In most cases, you have to write an extended abstract before registering your topic. This is a three to five page summary of your project. There's usually no deadline for submitting this abstract. So if you want to maximize the time you have available for writing your overall thesis, you can already use the unlimited time you have for the extended abstract to work on your thesis. Getting your topic approved is most often just a bureaucratic formality. So why not start researching interview partners or reading more into the theory for the extended abstract before your timer counts? Apart from that, you shouldn't stress too much about time. If your priorities are clearly focused on your thesis and you divide your work into smart work packages, the time you have is completely sufficient. It's just part of the examination. They want to know if you are capable of creating such a work within a defined period of time. Writing a PhD thesis usually takes three to five years. It took me four and a half to complete mine. How long it takes to write a thesis depends on a lot of factors. The requirements of your supervisors, whether you are part of a graduate school or some other fast track, how you fund yourself, how big your teaching load is, the administrative work that is expected of you, or whether your thesis is based on publications or is a monography. Here I can give you the same advice as before. Do not stress out about the time. Who cares if it takes you four years or five years? If you want to pursue an academic career, you can game the system here a little bit too. In academia, the clock starts ticking the moment you graduate from your PhD. Nobody cares how long it takes you to finish your PhD, but everybody cares about what you do in the time after that. So a big life hack is to write up the thesis with as little effort as possible and put as much effort as possible into publishing papers at the same time. It does not matter whether they are part of the story of your PhD or not. The only thing that matters is having a lot of papers in your pipeline immediately after you graduate. If you do your PhD to get two letters in front of your name and pursue a career in industry, then your strategy should be to write up your thesis as fast as possible. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in how I would do this. Difference number three, the originality of your thesis. Originality can mean two things. First, it can mean that you are pursuing a really unique idea. This could be bringing together different perspectives on an old topic or investigating an entirely new topic. Second, originality can also mean to do original research. This means collecting unique empirical data that no one else has collected. In a master's thesis, collecting original data is great, but it is not a must. For example, a great literature review could also make a great master's thesis. But for a PhD thesis, it is almost inevitable that you collect or at least analyze a unique data set. 
A PhD is only awarded if you can show that you have investigated a specific topic in more detail than anyone ever before. Even if you do a PhD in, let's say, English literature, you might not collect unique data, but you must deal with a specific question in so much detail that you can contribute to the current state of knowledge in your discipline. Before we continue with difference number four, let me just say a few words about the sponsor of this video, Scribber. If you are looking for a proofreading service or plagiarism check for your scientific work, I can wholeheartedly recommend the team at Scribber. Just have a look at scribber.com and send me a short email at info at schreib.eu for an exclusive coupon code. Difference number four, theoretical contribution. What often leads to question marks in the eyes of students is the role of theory within a thesis. Therefore, I would like to address this once again. Just because a PhD thesis requires added theoretical value doesn't mean you shouldn't use theory in your master's thesis. If you're not clear on the difference between literature and theory, or you've previously assumed that the two are the same, watch a couple of more videos on my channel about what a theory is, especially in social sciences. It's really important to understand this difference. For other disciplines outside of social sciences, it is not the quality of the theory, but the degree of innovation you can achieve with your thesis. In a master's thesis, you're not expected to independently develop or extend a theory. But anything you can contribute in this direction is very good. Approaches of generating new theory are, for example, inductively formed codes in a thematic analysis or the statistical verification of a theoretical relationship in a model. For literature-based work, which can also constitute a thesis, the laws are always a little different, that's clear. Here, it is most important that you not only summarize the literature descriptively, but that you analytically identify and reflect on patterns, themes and contradictions. In the social sciences, you can also generate a theoretical contribution from literature. Outside of the social sciences, a similar thing is possible, for example, with a meta-analysis. A good decision here would be to follow an established approach and do a systematic, narrative or meta-review. This way, you have a clear blueprint for your thesis and don't have to come up with a structure for your literature review yourself. Difference number five, the assessment criteria. Both masters and PhD theses are scientific works. If, for example, you quote incorrectly or your illustrations are full of pixels, then this is not good in either case. In this respect, no differences can be made here. Of course, the bar for master's thesis is not so high in terms of the added value of the work for the general research landscape. If you write a master's thesis that is formally and methodologically flawless, then you can't really fail. But you can earn a lot of goodwill by exceeding expectations. After all, no one says, oh, but 12 interviews are too much for a master's thesis. That's not good. So if you really want to get a top grade, try to over deliver in every category of a scientific study. If you make the mistake of limiting yourself by the demands of an average master's thesis, then that would be a pity. At the same time, of course, there is no pressure at all to do that. But if you were to ask me, what do I have to do to get a top grade, then over delivering would be my answer. Surprise your referees by doing more than they are used to. This increases the chance that they will give you a better grade than usual. For a PhD thesis, I can only give you the tip to team up with an early career researcher, such as a postdoctoral researcher or an assistant professor. This group of academics, to which I also belong, relies heavily on generating a high research output. If your PhD thesis can help with that and it answers a relevant question or provides valuable data for that person's research, then it will be reflected in your grade. The more research output you can generate from the work on your PhD thesis, the better your grade will turn out to be.